Praise the Lord. Welcome back to God's Way Community Church. Amen. I hope you are having a blessed day. Amen. I am. And I thank God for it because God is so good to us. Amen. We're going to get right started in our Bible study tonight. I hope that you uh, are ready to strap in and uh, receive something from the Lord. And because God is so blessed to us, we need uh, some encouragement and sustainment. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, how we're going to get that, how we can stay charged up to do the work of God. Amen. So stay with us. And I pray that God will bless you through this Bible study. But before we get started, as we always do, let's have some prayer together because prayer changes things, right? Amen. Go with me in prayer just for a moment. Father, in your blessed name, thank you for your power. Thank you for your might. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, the people that are going to be actually be inspired and hear this Bible study and want more of you. God, we need less of ourselves and we need more of you. I pray that in this Bible study, somebody's spirit is awakened. Somebody's mind is cleared. Somebody's desire is, is lifted up and increased to draw closer to you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' precious, sweet, magnificent name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank God for that. I feel inspired every time I pray. I don't know about you, but that's why prayer is such a powerful thing that we can use that to keep ourselves motivated and inspired, drawing closer to God. Amen. Now, don't forget our housekeeping, as we normally talk about, downloading this document will help you. You can use it for a Bible study later on if you choose to do that. It's important that you keep the Word of God uh, handy so that you can always go over it again and again and again. That's what I love about God's Word. It's always refreshing no matter how many times you've read it, right? Amen. That's what the Word of God does for us. Secondly, please don't forget to, down, to go to our webpage and Email us if you have any problems. Amen. If there's something wrong with the video, please don't hesitate to send us an email and let us know if you can't hear it or if there's any little glitch or there's something you want to know more of, something we didn't cover. Please, I beg you, reach out to us. Let us know. We want to do the best we can to make sure that you have a very good product and there's nothing hindering you from hearing the rich word of God. All right? But no further ado, let's launch into our Bible study for today. Amen. We're going to go into a Bible study. And here's our topic for the day. Our topic is very simple for the day. Uh, eat right. How many people like that? Eat right. <laughs> <laughs> I know the doctor tells us that all the time, and amen. We need that as spiritual uh, in the spiritual realm as well. Eat right. This is the secret to sustained spiritual power. Eat right. The secret, the secret to sustained spiritual power. Amen. How many people want spiritual power? I know I do, and I know I I need it. And there's a way that we can get it, and we're gonna talk about that today. All right, go to your Bibles, John chapter number four, verse five through and including eight. We're going to give a few scriptures here as well as verse 32 through 35. And I'll be reading again from the King James Version of the Bible. But if you don't have that version, feel free to follow along in the version that you might have. All right. Now, verse number five says, Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, talking about Jesus, which is called Sychar. Okay, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Look at verse six. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. Okay, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Verse eight, for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. And verse number 31, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him saying, Master, eat. Now, this is after they had come back from buying bread or whatever they had bought, fish or whatever, and they asked Jesus, eat something. But Jesus said unto them, I have meat. Here's our key verse that we want to capitalize off of and focus in on today. I have meat that ye know not of. Verse 33, therefore said his disciples unto one another, hath any man brought him all to eat? But Jesus said unto them, verse 34, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. 
I love that verse. I have meat that you know not of, verse number 32, and my meat, verse 34, is to do the will of him that sent me. Amen. Precious Savior, I thank God for that because we need to understand the power of having the right kind of food in us. Amen. So who, who doesn't like to eat? We all like eating, don't we? <laughs> Every person that I know just about that I've met loves to eat, okay? But food satisfies a natural hunger, and we know we need food. Food is it, 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 food is critical. Uh, we know we can go without food. There are a number of places that practice fasting. We believe in fasting in our church. I hope you do too. Uh, years ago, there, there many people thought it was strange for people to fast three or four days. Amen. The doctors and medical professionals and things like that have come to realize that, and, and they're beginning to even tell patients at times that periods of fasting is good for the body and to cleanse the body out with water and things of that nature. So we know that that is good for us. But food, we can't go without food for some indiscriminate amount of time uh, and 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 not be affected. Right? It it gives us energy to do what we do, all right? So we need that. And if you go without food too long, guess what's gonna happen? We're gonna die. I think the, the one report that I read, the person that I've read who fasted the longest I had ever heard of was a woman who fasted about 189 days without food on a hunger strike. I think she was from Pakistan or one of those other uh, Eastern countries and she passed away after that. So you can go a long time without food, but eventually you're gonna have to have it to be able to live. And your body just gets more and more depleted after it as it's eating off the reserves that's there. But the Bible teaches us that eating natural food is not enough, right? The Bible says we should not live by bread alone. Man should not live by bread alone, but what? what? But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, okay? That, uh, that word is very important. Out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, God's word should be so important to us, is more important to us, or should be more important to us than natural food. Okay? We're talking about eating right. Eat right because it's the secret to sustain spiritual power. Okay, in our story that we just read, our opening text, Jesus had gone to the city of Samaria, and when he got to the well, the Bible says he was weary. Now, he was tired, and he sat down at the well, but when the disciples went to get something to eat, in the meantime, Jesus began to witness to the woman at the well. Now, most of us have heard this story many, many times, so it's not a new story, and we know all about it. We remember how Jesus told the woman hey, about her, her married life and that the husband that she had was not her husband, and that woman was really mesmerized by Jesus' ability to see into her life. Can I help somebody? God already sees what your problem is. He already knows where you are, so he is coming to your well to be able to help you understand that you need something more than water that you're going to thirst again after if you drink that natural water. So Jesus was telling this woman how uh, he was the living water, right? And so the, when the disciples returned with the food that they had gone to get food in the city, the Bible says, they urged him to eat something. They knew he was tired. They knew that Jesus had been probably walking all day long, as which was their custom. They knew that he had probably been in contact with the crowds. And if anybody has ever been dealing with a lot of people a lot of times, you know that it can become exhausting. It can become emotionally draining. And Jesus was at that point. So they wanted him to be encouraged and to live and eat some natural food. But Jesus' response to them is where we're going to pick it back off of today because it leads us into the greatest riches of God and explains to us what we need to have in our minds. Jesus said, I have meat that you know not of, verse 32. And then he said in verse 34, my meat, he explains to them what it is. My meat, my substance, my food, that which it encourages me, that which it energizes me, that which keeps me sustained, which keeps me motivated, is to do the will of the him that sent me and to finish his work. Wow, that's powerful. And I'm going to tell you something. Here's why we're teaching this message today. And I'm going to be very honest with you. Can I be honest with you? It really bothers me sometimes. It really does. When I see so many people, particularly people who are Christian people, who say they believe God, who say they have been born again and they live for God, they are depleted of spiritual power. They seem they have no energy, no motivation, no desire, no passion for the things of God. It really troubles me when I sense that the church of the living Lord that he built on the day of Pentecost and, and designed to be able to be a great force in 
the world could be so much greater than we are, could do so much more than what we're doing. But before we do, we've got to get a hold of a revelation. And that revelation is we've got the wrong diet. Many of us are feasting on the natural man and starving the spiritual man when the reverse should really be the case. We should be feeding the spiritual man and starving out the natural, right? Amen. And so Jesus told the disciples just where it is. The meat that sustains me, that motivates me, propels me, keeps me encouraged, causes me to do what I'm doing. Everything that he had to do with natural food, he forgot all about that when that woman was up there and he was witnessing to her. That was no longer important. <laughs> We don't even know that he was going to eat anything anyway, but he probably would have because it was 6 o'clock in the afternoon, right? It was late in the evening. It was 12 o'clock noon. Uh, the Bible says it was about the sixth hour. Or the 12, okay? So it was, uh, he, was, he was probably hungry. They probably ate something in the middle of the day. But Jesus wasn't concerned about that. He was concerned about doing the will of God, propagating and spreading the gospel, winning the souls, and bringing people into the fold that they can be saved. This is important, and this is what we're going to talk about today. Jesus' reply to his disciples is the secret. We've got to be full of the will and purpose of God. That's the right food. And when we eat that, it'll sustain us, and we'll find we have more courage and energy. That's what we're going to get across to you today, and I hope you stay with us while we do that. Let's go to our first uh, verse then, and look at Jesus as he gives us this example. God's work meant everything to Jesus. Here's where we start. I love starting with Jesus because Jesus is our example. He, he did so many things that we would do what? Follow in his footsteps. That's exactly right. So what, let's talk about what he did. In Luke chapter number 2, verse 48 and 49, we read a, when Jesus was 12 years old, how he showed us what it meant to have a passion for the things of God, to be stimulated in his spirit to do what God wanted him to do. And when they saw him, verse number 48 says, they were amazed, talking about his mother and father. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us. Why did you do this to us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Now listen to what he's asking his parents. Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Look at what Jesus is saying to his parents. Don't you understand how critical it is that I be about the business of God who brought me, who sent me, who called me, commissioned me to do the work that I must do. What a sense of urgency, right? Now, obviously, we're not advocating that children, a 12-year-old, should just leave their parents and run off and, and find their calling. We're not saying that. Okay, so parents, you can relax on that. But what we're trying to say, we know Jesus was a special case, right? But what, he, what I want to show is his urgency and fervency to do the work of God. That passion was there as early as it could be. Take a look at John 4, 31 and 34. We just read that, and I'm going to read this again, verse number 32. But he said unto them, I have meat that you know not of. Jesus was trying to train his disciples to see that he had a passion inside him, that natural food wasn't as important. It wasn't the only thing that they should be concerned about, but spiritual diet. He wanted to eat right, and eating right to him meant being consumed and full of the will and purpose of God. Even if we don't have as much to eat as we want in the natural, he knew that his real energy, the real source of his strength, the real source of his vitality came from his desire to do God's will. When we are full of that, man, there's some changes going to come about. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Here's a very important thing that we got to remember. Jesus' work for God meant everything to him. As people of God, people who want to be uh, people of God, if you're, if you're a born-again Christian, I want to ask you this. Is that really your purpose? Is that your passion? Is your desire to do the will of God and to do the work of him that sent uh, him? That's very important for us to understand. That should drive us and motivate us more than anything else in the world. I'm going to be honest with you. We all have desires. We all want to do certain things. We all have, we all know that we have a finite amount of time here on this earth. We know that. We know that one day God is going to call us home and we're going to wake up and not have any more time left. But here's the thing that we've got to remember. Because we have that definition of the finite time, because we know we're not going to be here forever, isn't it important that we consume ourselves or we allow ourselves to be consumed by what is the most important thing? We need a diet that is spiritual. 
So many people in the world, so many are so spiritually depleted. I'm going to read some statistics to you pretty soon that has to do with how people are in terms of their Bible reading, their Bible study, and it's shocking. I tell you what, and it's something else that so many people, even Christians, need to learn from this. Jesus is trying to tell us, what's your meat? What's your diet consist of? What really keeps you sustained? For Jesus, it was doing the will of God. And since he's our, our shepherd and we're supposed to follow in his footsteps, that's what it should be for us. All right? Let's take a look at the next one. How do we obtain the right food? Let's talk about get, getting the right food and what the right food is. Let's talk about that. Uh, so we know that, that it, when we need food, we need food and water, right? Food and water in the natural is, is, is imperative, especially water, because we can't live without water. I mean, you can go a long time without food, but if you don't have water in your system for a long time, you're going to find you have some problems, okay? It's just like an automobile. An automobile is a fantastic invention, isn't it? Yeah, I'm so glad we have those. Amen. And But you know what? If you don't have water in your radiator, just think about how small a radiator is compared to all the rest of the systems in a car. It's just one small area with the radiator and the water pump and the, and the water flowing through the, the, the different parts of the heads of the car. But if you don't have that two gallons of water, whatever it is, and there are two or three gallons of water, maybe four in there, sometimes I don't think it's that much in some cars that are so small. But if you don't have that a little a bit of water that gets very hot, by the way, but still effective enough to keep that engine cool from overheating, you're not going anywhere. You're not, at least you're not going long. The same is true with us in the spiritual sense. We need food and water. Let's talk about that living water, that spiritual water that we need. John 7, 37 through 39, in that last great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried, if any man thirst, listen to this, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this, look at verse 39, but this spake he of the spirit, which they which believed on him should receive. Can I help somebody right here? If you've been believing in Jesus Christ and you said, Brother Bacon, I'm a believer, then I'm going to ask you, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Because if you are a believer, that is one thing that the believing should lead you to. Here's a good way to test your faith. Is your faith drawing you to the water, to, to Jesus so that you can be filled with that living water, so that you can be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost? The first thing we need to do if we're going to actually eat right is we've got to get a well in us that produces water because we need life-sustaining water to do the work of God. We need water to to be able to survive. So Jesus said, he that believeth in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He talked about the, the, water, the spirit of God, and this he spake of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to understand this. This is very critical. This is a very critical point, and a lot of people, I don't think, really understand this. The Holy Ghost is compared in this particular context to an endless, everlasting source of water that springs up and flows. Now get this, when the person receives the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost goes in us and it becomes a source. Amen. It becomes a source from which power flows. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It becomes a source from which power flows. Now it flows from us who are filled with the Holy Ghost so that we can supply to those who are in need, right? So, it, hello, thank you, Lord. So if you and I have the Holy Ghost, we should be able to pour out. We sh People should be able to draw out from us that which will sustain them because we have the Holy Ghost. It's kind of like somebody having a car that has a fully charged battery and charging somebody else's battery who is depleted in their car. There is a fire that will go from one battery to the other and cause that car to start up. Whoop, whoop, and all of a sudden, that person is off and going. Okay, If we have the power of the Holy Ghost, this is important. This right here is what we need to think about in terms of our diet. Are we eating right? Do we have the secret to sustain power? Here it is. Here's part of it right here. We've got to have the Holy Ghost if we're going to have sustained power. If we want the motivation and the purpose in us that drives us to do the will of God, it will not come if we don't have a well of water springing us up in us. We will be depleted, dry, crusty, uh, and, and drawn up so that we have nothing to give out. 
This is important. Amen. Very important. Uh, you can't share. It's just like having a, a lunch. Who, uh, you can't share your lunch with somebody. If you only got a tiny little bit, you're kind of apprehensive about how much you're going to share. Right? But if you have plenty to eat, I mean, I've done that before. I've gone into restaurants before and somebody homeless be there and I'll have something to eat. And they'll say, oh, can you give me something to eat or buy something? And I'll say, hey, you, I'll go get something. Hey, take take half of mine. Take two or three pieces of my chicken. I don't I don't need all those pieces on there. You can eat some of this. Why? There was plenty enough for me and them, right? But if you're depleted and you don't have to give out, how can you help somebody else? The first thing we need is to have the Spirit of God in us to create a well of water. When we do that, we'll have spiritual power. We'll be able to have something that will flow out to others and help others. That's critical in our diet. If we eat right, that's part of the secret right there is having that well of water. Then we need food. Food and water go together, right? You don't have to have Pepsi or Coca-Cola. Some people like iced tea and things of that nature. But when most people eat a, eat a meal, they at least like something to drink to wash it down. Like a, Again, like I said, water is important. But the food is important as well. Food, you get your protein, you get your, your carbohydrates, your fats, and all these different kind of things that you need, your sodium. And, and yes, even though salt has been given a bad rap because of the kind of salt we use on our tables today, your body needs salt right? And you're going to get that from your diet. Not too much, but it does need salt, amen, to do a number of things in the body. So all these things come from the food you eat. Now, what's our spiritual food that we're going to have? The Bible tells us that that food should be the word of God. Ezekiel chapter number three, verse one through three, Ezekiel said, moreover, he said unto me, listen to what he said, son of man, eat that thou findest. I like the scripture. Eat this roll. God had a scroll and he told Ezekiel when he showed him the vision. He said, eat the scroll and go and speak to the house of Israel. Now, notice what he told him first. Eat, then go. Don't, don't not go, then eat, <laughs> right? Eat first, then go. Get, some, get something in you, some substance for the journey. Something that's going to help sustain you while you're going, then go, okay? Then go to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth. This is what he, Ezekiel did. I opened my mouth. And he calls me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I did eat and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Look at John chapter 6 verse 51. We'll talk about this other verse in just a minute. John 51, uh, 6, 51, Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. All right. Paul told Timothy in first uh, Timothy chapter four, verse 13, till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortation and doctrine. Now let's talk about this verse for a minute. When Ezekiel went and had the vision and God spoke to him, God told him to eat the roll. Eat what you find. That is the word of God. Saints, let me tell you something. If we eat right, we are going to consume the word of God. He didn't just tell Ezekiel to taste the food, but to consume it. Eat it. Let it go into your bowels. Let it become a, 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 a digestive thing to you. Take it in. Uh, ponder it. Think about it. Let it go into your heart. Chew on it, okay? This was very important that it became food, okay? Now, if we put something in our mouth and we spit it back out again, that's not going to do us very much good, is it? Saints, this, this is a very important thing right here I want to tell everybody that either is saved, living for God, or if you're seeking God, you will not be able to do the work, work of God without the Word of God. It takes the Word of God down and we should saturate ourselves with the Word of God. I, I, I remember years ago when they used to teach about nutrition and nutrition class and stuff when I was in elementary school and all that, they would always tell you how, how much of your, your plate, the biggest portion of your plate should be supplied with vegetables and protein proteins and things that were going to give you substance, things that were going to stick with you for a while, things that were going to make you, you know, be able to grow, right? Not, not candy and cookies and these kind of, you know, too many people are knick-knacking and eating off of the natural candies and stuff of the world or the spiritual candies of the world, should I say, uh, the things that they don't need, things that are not going to do us any good, but our spiritual body is being depleted. Can I help you? We have two things to think about. If we feed the spiritual man, the natural man will begin to be starved out. That will always happen. The more we speak, feed the spiritual and the less we pay attention to the natural, the natural man will be starved out. But herein is a problem. Here's what's going on today. So many people are feeding the natural man 
and the spiritual man is going hungry. They're not eating right. And because that, they have not tapped into what Jesus was trying to share with his disciples. The secret to sustain spiritual power. They need meat that's not of this world. They need meat that's not that doesn't come from Samart or some other grocery store. Okay? They need meat that comes from the Word of God. This is why this is very important. We have to have that if we're going to have that sustained power, that drive, that desire to do the will and work of God. I want to read some statistics with to you here that's really, really, uh, really eye-opening, right? And I've talked about this sometimes. You hear me talk about it a number of times. But I, I, when I read these statistics, I just say, God, help us. We really need... We really need God to help us with some of this stuff because the people in this world who are Christians, who are saying they're born again, the, if these statistics are anywhere clear, uh, close to being correct, we really are really not doing a great job of shining the light of God to the world. And this is going to be critical when the Lord comes to receive his church. So those of you who are born again, I want you to listen to these statistics. And I want you to think about them as I say this. Of the 2 billion Christians that are in this world, less than 30% of them, according to the statistics on this one uh, research, said less than 30% of the 2 billion Christians in the world will ever read their Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Less than 30% of them will ever even read it. That's, that's incredible. Look at this. Staggering. 82% of Christians uh, that are Americans only read their Bible on Sundays when they're in church. That is the only time 82%. We're not talking about people who are unbelievers. We're talking about people who are born again and who say that they believe Christ and they, they live for Christ. They are followers of Christ. 82% of them only read their Bible when they're in church. Isn't that amazing? And look at this. Only 22% of the people, 22% of Christians believe that the Bible is the fully inspired, authentic word of God, inspired by God, breathed into the conscience of men who wrote the holy scriptures that we have. Only 22% of those people who say they're Christians really believe that. Saints, let me tell you something. We are not eating right. Our diet is depleted because we're not taking in the word of God. We don't know the Bible. We, ha we have so many people across the world. I remember coming to church and having a pastor who taught us, read the Bible. Go home, take this book that I have and read it. Take the word of God and digest it for yourself. I remember him saying, don't just listen to me preach the word, but go home and take the word of God and read it for yourself. I don't know, but maybe in many of the churches, evangelicals, Protestants, many of them are on these statistics and on this form. Maybe they don't get that, that maybe somebody's not telling them, here's why we don't have the secret. Here's why we don't have sustained spiritual power. Here's why we cannot lay hands on the sick and they recover. Here's why we're not seeing the operating operation of the gifts in the church of God. Here's why we're not seeing the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in our services. Oh, great God, help us. Here's why we're not seeing people healed and delivered from problems. Here's why. We are living off of a diet that is depleting us and we don't realize it and we need to turn to eat right. We need the meat that Jesus talked about, the desire to do the will of God. And that comes from the Holy Ghost dwelling inside of us and devouring the word of God eating that scroll and consuming it, oh, hallelujah, till it becomes power in our spirits that we desire to do what God wants us to do. We need to eat right, and then God can do something with us. Oh, praise God, I feel the anointing on this thing. We need to understand this, saints, that God is calling the world, and he is calling the world through the people who are believers, who love God, who are his church, and if you're part of that church, I'm challenging you to analyze your diet, to look at what you're eating and tap into the secret of sustained spiritual power. All right, we've got to move on. Now, here's what's going to happen. What happens when we eat right? Everybody knows that when we begin to eat right, praise God, we begin to feel better, don't you? Okay, uh, most doctors who will give you a prescription will tell you, okay, now you need to kind of cut back on this if you got, you know, diabetes or you're suffering from this kind of illness or you have many illnesses that we have, and this is just true, I think most people know this, many illnesses that we have in the body are a function of, or a byproduct, I'll use that phrase, a byproduct of our not eating the right things. 
right? Now, it's very difficult to eat the right things nowadays, or at least it is more difficult than it was many years ago when my father was a boy, because back then they didn't put so many chemicals and uh, pesticides and and they weren't engineering food and they weren't tampering with the animals. Uh, if you go, if you want to know what they do to animals to get them to produce more food, go to one of these animal science classes, take an animal science class at college or something. It'll amaze you what they do to try to get cows to produce more milk and more meat and, and chickens that are now uh, super chickens, you know, years ago, you know, now it takes just, my, my brother owns a chicken farm and it takes about 40 days and the chicken goes from a little bitty thing like that to, you know, five pound bird, amen, and, and just four, and thousands of them are being turned over because of the substances that we put in the food that we eat. So it's difficult to eat right, but when we begin to eat right, we know when we get to that point, we begin to feel better. Right. We begin to feel better automatically because we're eating the proper stuff. So if we even in this bucket that we have today, when we get closer to better quality food, not so many fats and you know the whole bit that we begin to feel better in the body. The same thing is going to happen to us in our spiritual diet. When we begin to deplete our diet of all the nonsense, the, the entertainment, the television, all the different gossip shows, the sitcoms and the different things people spend their time doing, foolishness and playing around, the, the book that some people read, the magazines they read, the music we listen to, where we go and spend our time. When we begin to, when we begin to minimize all that and wash that kind of stuff out of our diet and begin to take more in the rich word of God and feast on his word, then we will begin to feel better. <laughs> Our spiritual mind will enlighten. Our bodies will become different. Our whole personalities will change because now we are beginning to eat properly and we're beginning to tap into the secret of sustained spiritual power. This is what's going to happen. Work, God's work will become our top priority. Once you start eating, haven't you noticed this? If you've ever been on a diet in your life, you know that this is true. After you're on it for a while, you know, at first it's kind of difficult. But after you're on it for a while, things start changing. You start having a desire to really, really do what's right. You start, you start feeling, feeling this thing. So now it becomes a priority to, to you to eat right. You begin to look at the labels on the food a little more cautiously. You're kind of going around the store and you're, you're not just grabbing stuff off the shelf. You're really kind of paying attention to what it is you're consuming because you've, you've, you're seeing the benefits of this thing. See, that's what happens when we do God's will. Matthew 6, tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added to you. When we begin to do that, like God says, that's his way. God's way is to put him first. How can I help somebody? This is what many people go wrong. And this is why there's so many people who are depleted of spiritual power. They keep trying to live in the flesh. Hello. They keep trying to do what they need to do on their own. Hello. They keep trying to tap into God with their own intellect. No, this is a spiritual thing and it needs spiritual food. All right. We're fighting a spiritual warfare. Amen. The Bible tells us that, right? We're not fat, uh, wrestling with flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness. You need to fight spiritual fires with spiritual weapons. Okay. Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. Then look at what the promise is. All these things shall be added to you. I've said this many times and most of you know this is true. God always gives us a remedy to how to get things done his way. First, we do what God tells us to do. Then we, in faith, expect the results. That's the way it works. If many people got hold of that, oh my goodness, what would we do? If we find ourselves, now here's the test. How do I know, Brother Bacon, that I'm taking, I'm not doing things God's way. I'm, he's not my priority. If you find that you're more interested in satisfying your natural taste buds for the things you want to do, oh, it's about me. I remember the scripture where the Lord told the people, uh, come and follow me. And they begin one after another to make excuse. Lord, suffer me first to go to go do this. I'll follow you, but suffer me first to bury my father. I'll follow you, but suffer me first to go uh, to plow this, this, this land or suffer me first to go and, and, and get married. Every time we turn around, there is too much of me first. But this is the problem. When we analyze our life, are we so concerned about our natural care, our things we want to do first, that God's things and the spiritual things have taken a backseat? If you sense that in your life, I'm going to tell you something right now. It's time for you to put it down. It's time for you to stop it. It's time for you to eat right. It's time for you to elevate the spiritual and deplete the natural. It's time for you to get to the place where you want God, more of him, saturating you 
infused in you so they can flow out of you. That's what happens. Jesus said this, seek the kingdom first. When we do that, we will find that we'll always have money enough, we'll have time enough, we'll have clothing enough, we'll have transportation enough, and we'll have natural food enough to do the things we need to do, and God will supply those other needs. That's the key, and that's what we need to be after. When we do get the right food, one thing will happen, God will become our priority, and everything else will shift into place. I guarantee you that. Here's the next thing that happened. I want to talk about this. I wrote this down because this is a big problem. Loneliness. I don't know how many times I've heard people talk about loneliness, and loneliness is a big problem in this world. Millions, thousands of people every year are going to see specialists because they're lonely. And and the, the statistics that I've read show that in the millions, in the next couple of years, millions, I think it's two, three million people, they will expect to be diagnosed with lonely. Loneliness takes away your life quality. It strips people of their will to do a number of things and many people succumb to it and actually end up committing suicide because of it. It is a serious problem, but it is not only a serious problem in the people who are unbelievers. It is becoming a serious problem for people in the church. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe Jesus gave us the answer today as a remedy to some of that problem of loneliness, to be full, full, of the Spirit of God and be full of the will and purpose of God to, so that our time and our energy is expended doing His work. That is what the key is. I want to read this to you. John 8, 29, he, Jesus said, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. Did you get that? He has not left me alone. Oh, praise God. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you're not alone. <laughs> Amen. That's one thing I love about prayer and in the, praying in the prayer closet. When you get in that prayer closet, you realize when you make contact with God, you're not alone. He's there with you all the time. In fact, I'm going to tell you something, that being alone with God is one of the best ways to cure loneliness. To when you get to the point that you are at peace with God. All by yourself. Oh man, great, great God, hallelujah. I thank God for that. Amen. I am so glad I found that that is one of the great joys of living for God is being able to find fellowship with him, comfort with him, time with him, and love with him all by myself. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus said, the Father had not left me alone. He is with me. Amen. Why? I always do those things, he said, to please him. This is a ticket for somebody. This is going to help somebody right here. When you are spending your time, your energy, your talents, your passion, and saturating yourself with the purpose of doing God's will. God is with you. You please him when you do that. I remember telling somebody once, and I believe this to my heart, and I've asked God to help me with this. God has given me a number of talents, and I've asked God, please help me take those and hone them and hone them and hone them for your purpose. I'm not worried about being a millionaire. I'm not worried about people having a whole bunch of crowds calling my name. I want to be able to tell God the talents you gave me I used them. I used every one of them that I had. And I did everything I could to expand those. This is, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I feel the spirit of God. Amen. We ought to have a mindset that we want to use what we have for God. And when we extend and expend ourselves working for Jesus, we will not find it so easy to become lonely because we will realize that we are never alone. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, I think I put that in your notes. For which cause we faint not because our outward man, listen what he says, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, he will never forsake thee nor leave thee. Never leave thee nor forsake thee. This is what Paul was trying to tell people. Look, the outward man dies. This is how it's supposed to be. Yes, we go through trials. Yes, people get sick. I'm not putting that down. I'm not saying that something's wrong because we get sick. Everybody will experience some sickness of some sort in the body sometime. Jesus, the Bible says, when he went to the well, he was weary. He was tired. Amen. The body gets tired, but the inner man was renewed. <laughs> the, 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 that's the key. That yes, your body will get tired, but I believe with all my fibers and every bit of my being that if you get into the word of God, that if we allow the word of God to saturate us, if we eat 
that scroll that, that Ezekiel was eating and consume the word of God. Make it our primary diet of substance, of mental things, of things we think about. If there's anything that, that, that Paul told them to think on these things, Philippians 4 and 8, or whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is good, whatever is a good report, if there be any virtue, there be any praise, think on these things. If we will allow that food to filter in through our being, we will find that even though the outward man goes through trouble, the outward man gets sick. The outer man doesn't feel good every day. The inner man will have a renewed source of power. That is the secret to sustained spiritual power. We've got to have the meat, the word of God, and that water, that living water, the Holy Ghost flowing in the inside. And then we'll be able to overcome things, even the great disease of loneliness that's taking so many people by storm. All right. We, here's something else. We're going to experience joy and rejoicing. You ought to get excited just by hearing the word joy. Doesn't the word joy make you feel happy? It makes me feel happy just to say the word, all right? Je Jeremiah 15 and 16 says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Look at what the prophet said, the weeping prophet, okay? And thy word was unto me, it was to me, joy and rejoicing of my soul, of my heart. Now, look at what he says on the last end of that verse. For I am called by thy name, O Lord of hosts. Now, Jeremiah, most people have heard of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. He was weeping because he was tenderhearted. He was passionate. He cared about the people of Israel. He was sick in his heart, heartbroken that the people of Israel had distanced themselves so much from God. Okay, this bothered Jeremiah. He, and so he cried and wept for them. And the messages, if you read Jeremiah and, and the book of Lamentations, the messages that he was given to take to the people of Israel, they weren't good messages. They were, they, God was going to do a lot of stuff to these people because they had backslidden and fallen away from him. So he had to be the bearer of bad news. You can, you can. They put Jeremiah in a pit. They hit him. They beat him up. They did a number of things to this guy. There were a number of times when Jeremiah said, "I'm, I, I'm going to give up. I'm not going to preach anymore because I just can't take it." Okay, but God moved on him. The Spirit of God, the Word was in him like a fire shut up in his bones. Oh, great God Almighty! It was like a fire shut up in his bones, and he couldn't forbear. He had to speak the Word of God. But then, then look what God does for the weeping prophet to inspire his heart. I want you to get this. Thy words were found. Thy words were found. Not Ebony Magazine or, or, or uh, 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 Men's Magazine or whatever it is you might read. Uh, not the cookbook of the day, How to Prepare Chicken a Thousand Ways. No, not the newspaper. No, 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 no. Thy words were found. And look what he said. And I ate them. <laughs> I found your words and I gobbled them up. Man, it did a work for me. Why? And look what happened when he ate them. Now, this guy, he needed to be uplifted because he was so tired of preaching gloomy messages to people who weren't responding. I and mean, praise the Lord, I can identify sometimes, all right? But he was tired of that. But look what he said. But when I found your words, man, I ate them and there was a different response when I consumed them for myself. Notice what he said. I didn't try to use them to build a sermon off of. That wasn't my primary intent. My primary intent was to eat them and consume them so that I, and notice what happened when he ate them. They were unto me joy and rejoicing in my heart. Oh, great God. If we eat right, folks, that's the secret to sustain spiritual power. You got to eat the word of God. You got to let it come in and it will be joy and rejoicing in your heart. I love this last part. Before we go on out of, off of this, this last part is really great. He says, because I am called, somebody say called, I'm called by your name. That is the key. When we realize I'm not just a nothing or nobody, God filled me with the Holy Ghost and changed my life. Amen. When the Holy Ghost came in, the junk went out. He filled me with his precious spirit. I'm a well of water springing up to give supply to somebody that's in need. Great God Almighty, when he filled me, he said, I am a joy. And this is why I'm no longer isolated, separated from the commonwealth of Israel, alienated from God. I am a child of the king. Call by his name. This is powerful. This is amazing. This is eating right. This is the secret to sustain spiritual power. You got to get the word of God and you got to eat that thing and you got to understand God called you. He chose you. He made you. He designed you to do something. 
And that is to propagate his word to out the world, to everybody who would hear you. All right. Very important for us to get that. When we get the right food in us, not only is God going to become our priority, not only will we be able to overcome loneliness, that we're going to have a rejoicing in us. And the last thing I want to share with you before I go home today is we're going to learn how to walk in this dark world. Darkness is something that frightens people. But when you get the word of God, watch what happens. He says in Psalms chapter 119, verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Imagine that. When you eat right, things get illuminated, right? Amen. You know how many people can't see because of blindness? You know how many? You, diabetes. Did you know that there are millions of people who are suffering from uh, 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 blindness or some type of blindness? What do they call it? Retinop retinop retinopathy. That's what they call it. Retinopathy. Retinopathy is a, is a disease that affects the eyes where people begin to go blind because of diabetic problems, okay? Because they're diabetics, all right? There are a lot of people who are suffering from that. I think the last report I read says some 145 million people have, have that problem, okay? Blindness, you, you you, when you can't see, it's a horrible thing. Most people, if you ask them what thing that they would not, they hope they never lose, what sense that they have, they don't ever want to lose, they will probably mostly tell you either their hearing or their eyes, okay? Because those things seem to be the most important things. You can't navigate very good when you can't see. So God said, look, if you take my word, my word is a lamp unto your feet, a light into my path. When we take the word of God and we begin to eat right, guess what will happen? Our, we, our eyes will come open. We will be things will begin illuminated. We will begin to, begin to see how to navigate around the world. The devil may throw things in our path, but we will have the spiritual insight, the spiritual eyesight to be able to see how to navigate. Thy word is a lamp unto my path. Look what he says in Psalms 119 and 130. The entrance of thy words give light. Notice that. The entrance of your word immediately illuminated place. That's like walking into a dark room that's pitch black and somebody striking a match in that room. Immediately that room, no matter how big it is, is going to have light for you to at least see in front of you, right? Just with a little match. The entrance of God's word is enough to immediately give light to you. Can I help somebody before I let you off this program? If you want insight, how to take care of your business, things you ought to do, great decisions that's in your path that you need to make, trying to make up your mind on how to do this or that, you're praying and you're asking God which way you should go, get the word of God in your diet. You get the word of God in your diet and God will help you understand how to navigate the things in this world. I'm telling you the truth. He's a master builder, a master planner, a master designer. He knows the pathways. He designed them all. Amen. Let the word of God go into your heart and inspire you. And as God begins to speak to you and illuminate you, he'll show you what it is. Oh, great God Almighty. He'll show you what it is you should do. Eat right. For that is the secret to sustain spiritual power. There's no reason for anyone in this world, particularly in America, where there are so many Bibles, where the Bible is the number one printed book of all time. Every year it outsells every other book, where every home has at least one Bible, where the Bible has been published in over 6,000 different languages. There is no reason for anybody on this globe to be depleted and defeated and broken down when there's so much meat to be eaten by the word of God. The spiritual man should be being renewed day by day. I tell you right now, this is a key. Eat right. And I guarantee you, your spiritual sustainment, your power to go on without natural things will astonish you. Jesus had the key and he shared it with his disciples at the well. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. If you're going to finish it, you need food to take you through the journey. You need the word of God and the spirit of God. I hope this message has helped you. I hope it blesses your soul. Don't forget, do it God's way and get God's results. Share this video with someone. Tell someone to subscribe. Perhaps we can illuminate someone else. Perhaps God's word will filter to another soul and bless those that, that are without to come into the body of Christ. Bless you. God keep you until the next time. In Jesus' name, we'll see you next time.